Time for the specials. I'll go over PK Fire first. It has 21 frames of startup. It lingers until frame 38. Aerial PK Fire has 19 frames of landing lag. It, if it touches our hitbox or hurt box, it releases an explosion on the next frame that lingers until 19 frames have passed. Grounded Fire is minus 24 on shield at point blank range, and Aerial PK Fire is the safest plus 4 with perfect spacing on a parry if done from a perfect landing. Landing Fire is safer by number due to the pushback it gives Lucas and the lower landing lag it has than Grounded Fire. Fire is a, quote, I'll punish you for doing this bad habit tool, quote, rather than a, quote, I'll use this during neutral to annoy you tool, quote. It's mostly used to condition an opponent, snipe landings on stage, disrupt zoning attempts due to clanking most projectiles with its two hitboxes, or pressure off stage. It has massive travel distance. The air version also has important use as a wave bounce slash B reverse option due to the pushback it has when fired. Fire is a conditioning tool overall. A safe option to use during advantage, an effective anti-zoning tool due to its two hitboxes clanking numerous projectiles. It's only closest to a quote-unquote neutral tool if the opposing opponent has paltry mobility. PK Freeze has 40 to 92 frames of startup depending on the charge, taking 5 from those startup frames to detonate. The hitbox lingers for 4 frames. It has 23 frames of ending lag after the hitbox dissipates, making it very difficult to punish. It's minus 15 on shield with no charge and minus 5 on shield with a maximum charge. Although it's too slow to be a neutral tool, unless you're against a low mobility character, it counts as an advantage state tool that's overpowered on hit slash shield while commanding loads of respect and space due to it carrying characters to the blast zone on hit. It even has use as a protection tool while recovering. It forces the character in its growing detonation range to shield, use reflectors, or to become full body intangible. Air dodge or move out of the space where your opponent thinks you'll detonate it. It can be delayed for mix-ups. It two frames, it lets traps from time properly as it forces options, can pressure off-stage opponents, it safely threatens landings if you have time to set it up, it can control platforms, it does high shield damage if charged, halfway or more. The opposing character's percent controls the duration in which they will be encased in the block of ice. The higher their percent is, the longer they'll stay encased. Overall, PK Freeze is a mobile trapping tool your opponent has to worry about due to its large detonation delay and overall reward on hit. Side Magnet has 6 frames of startup for the wind box, which is only active on frame 6, 7 frames of startup for the absorption detection, and 19 frames of startup for the damaging hitbox. It has 27 frames of total animation, making it difficult to whiff punish, actually. The damaging hitbox from Magnet is one of the safest shield pressure options due to being zero on block. Magnet has a wind box while grounded and airborne. Aerial Magnet has a wind box that grows in pull strength depending on the opposing character's percentages and Lucas's rage built. Lucas can cancel the absorb animation as early as frame one with jump, spot dodge, or roll from a successfully absorbed energy projectile. Its primary functions are as a shield pressure tool on a conditioned opponent, being a jab lock anger, or punishing energy projectile usage. Movement mix-ups with wave bounce and B-reverses are also very important with this move. And using the area windbox to disrupt your opponent is also very important. PK Thunder. This is the orb I'm going over, the projectile itself, not PK Thunder 2. It has 20 frames of startup, it lingers for 122 frames, has 12 frames of end lag if the orb makes contact with a wall or surface while airborne, 44 frames of end lag if the orb touches a wall or surface if Lucas is grounded. The projectile itself is intangible, meaning hitboxes won't clank it and only reflectors absorbers can stop it if it makes contact. It hits every 6 frames, passes through shields, and hurt boxes. It also shield locks an opponent if they're shielding it. Its primary function is that of an near riskless edge guarding option, an infrequent option to cover yourself before you grab the ledge, or a platform pressuring tool. It can interrupt characters directly denying ledge snap, two frame, or create very difficult stage tech situations due to the large amounts of delay Lucas can make with the tail and the orb ensnaring into a controlled stage tech. It sends the opponent away in the direction it's moving and sends in the tumble against the whole cast before 10%.
it can be one of the most infuriating edge guarding tools to deal with effectively. It's also minus 37 on shield. Peek at Thunder 2 is Lucas's primary recovery option. It travels very far. It has a 34 frame window to use another Peek at Thunder after bonking against a wall or a surface. It has 1 to 9 intangibility frames during startup. It can be used from numerous angles off stage to recover. Peek at Thunder 2 has 60 frames of total animation, 30 frames of landing lag, and it multi hits on every 2 frames from 1 to 30 with a 1 frame gap on frame 28 for some strange reason. The last hitbox isn't as strong as you think, and most of the hitboxes, except on frames 1 to 2 and 29 to 30, have little disjoint, making the move definitely challengeable with a sizable hitbox. Holding down can allow the move to ride up walls, bonk walls, or shoot past the ledge if angled properly. Well, that's all of the content I have for a basic Lucas guide. I hope this tutorial helped someone out there who is interested in using Lucas or just needs some basic information about what the character is about. Until next time, Titan Gamer logging out.